Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D tutorial, we're going to be looking at the LOD object or generator for Cinema 4D R19. Uh, so, I've got a sky object and a floor, which is basically a disc, and uh, I've got three models in the scene. And I've got a high poly model, I've got a mid poly model, and a really low one. And what we want to do is switch between these using the LOD object. Okay, so what is the LOD object and what is its point? Um, well, it utilizes a technique typically seen in uh, game engines like Unity or Unreal Engine. And basically what it does is when the camera is far away from an object, it uses a poly, uh, low poly version of that object. And that way it doesn't have to draw a lot of polys on screen. And as you get closer, um, it swaps that model out for a higher poly model and then obviously because you're closer to it you're going to be able to pick out the details and stuff like that and it's just a way of keeping frame rate nice and fast um, so it's really optimization and the same thing can be done in the cinema 4d viewport especially when you've got a lot going on in it um, you can keep your frame rate uh, nice and zippy so why would that be important? Uh, you may be trying to animate a camera move, or you might even be trying to animate objects. And if there's uh, too much going on and it's bogging down your viewport, you're going to need to get your frame rate up because there's nothing more annoying than trying to get the timing of an animation right and you're playing back at very slow frame rates. So this helps uh, do that. So let's get, uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to create an LOD object, which is here. And um, I'm just going to flip over to a different display mode so we can actually see very high um, poly topology there. And there's our mid level and our low level. And we're going to swap out between these. So let's drag our LOD down here. And I'm going to put our objects inside of it. But we need to make sure that these are in the same location. So our mid poly object is at zero on the X. And these objects aren't. So let's uh, let's just get them all in the same place by zeroing out the X. And I'm just going to flip back to our other display mode. So now they're all laying on top of each other. And I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to drop them inside this LOD. Okay, so let's select the LOD. If we go to the Object tab, the LOD mode is Children, which is correct for what we're doing. Uh, we've made... Uh, our level of detail models, children of the LOD. So that's what we need, children. Uh, the criteria, I'm going to use um, screen size V. You can use screen size H, uh, but I'm going to choose V. And basically what this does is it looks at the bounding box for our objects. And it basically says that um, when the vertical dis uh, the vertical length of our bounding box has reached a certain threshold, we're going to switch models. And that's what this LOD bar is for. Now, if I was to drag one of these models out, like so, and then go back to the LOD, you'll see the bounding box has changed size. And that's because it's, you know, trying to encompass everything that's in it. And that's why they need to be laid on top of each other. Well, one of the reasons anyway. Okay, so we're doing it by screen size V. So let's uh, try moving our um, viewport camera in and out and see what happens. Okay, so the further I've moved out, I've got the high poly model. And when I move in, we've got the mid poly model. And then even closer, I've got the low poly model. Uh, so this is backwards. This is not what we want. Um, and it's because of the ordering of our children. You need the high poly model at the top. You need the mid poly model in the middle obviously and then your lowest at the bottom so now when we're close we're seeing this nice high detailed model and then as we move out it switches to the mid poly model and as we move further out we get the low poly model uh, so it actually changes model at a place that i don't want it to change um, and that's what this lod bar is all about we can actually change uh when when our models get flipped over. Now you'll notice that underneath the LOD bar we've got this uh, small black circle here. I hope you guys can see that. But this actually denotes the position of our camera or at least distance away from our object. Um, so keep an eye on this as I move in and out and you'll see it change. So it's letting us know where our camera is. So 
I'm going to get to a point where I think I should still be looking at our highly high detailed model. And that's about there. And as you can see, that's our camera distance here. So I'm going to move this all the way up to here. So now we will see this uh, high poly model all the way out up into this point where it changes just there. Okay. So that's fine. I don't want it to change to our low poly here either. So I'm going to move that further out by doing this. So we've got our high poly move out. We've got our mid poly and even further still. I'd probably want that to change a little bit earlier, probably there. So let's move that down here. So that should be good. Let's try that. High poly, mid poly, low poly. Excellent. So everything's working as it should be. So in this case, I don't think it would matter too much. It'd only be when you've got a lot of objects on the screen that this would really uh, show any benefit. But um, this is a good opportunity to show you that this actually works inside a cloner. So if we select the MoGraph object and select a cloner, I'm just going to drag that down here and then put our LOD inside the cloner. We get this and then I'm going to select our cloner and say uh, uh, it's currently 50 in the Y. So let's zero that out. I'm going to have it move in the X, uh, sorry, the Z. So let's move that at 500 in the Z and we get this which is very good. And I think that I'm going to stretch these out a little bit more, at least up the count. So there we go. We've got six, seven, eight, nine. So what we got now, let's make this 20 for argument's sake. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to make a quick animation just to demonstrate really. So I'm going to create a camera put that there, go into our camera. I'm going to go to the beginning of our timeline and make a keyframe. I'm going to go all the way to the end and uh, I'm going to go to the coordinates of the camera and actually just scooch this along its Z direction. And there we go. And then keyframe that. So if we go back to the beginning now and press play, you'll see that we've got the high poly model at front and as, as a well, you can see our low polys at the end here. And as they get closer to us, they switch to the mid poly and then the high poly. And if you look at the FPS at the bottom here of our viewport, I'll just let it flip round. You can see that we're, uh, we're not doing too bad. It's helping just keep our viewport zippy. Our camera animation looks pretty smooth. Um, so all's well and good. There is another way that you can use the LOD object. So I'm just going to take that out of our cloner and uh, get rid of that. Also our camera as well. Now, if we only had one of these models, let's take the low and the high polys out of this and hide them. So we're just left with our mid poly level of detail object. Okay, so we just got our uh, mid poly uh, animal in our LOD. So let's go back to that and uh, let's change this LOD mode. We're going to change it to simplify. Um, and we're going to leave this at screen size V. So that should uh, help us. And basically, you know, zooming in out does nothing at the moment. And that's because we can create our own levels. So let's just uh, let's uh, get to where we want it to flip over maybe there. So I'm going to create uh, something here. It's a little bit far away. Let's do it here. At least so you can see what's going on. And you'll see that we created another level here and it's actually created this level one. So what do we want to happen at level one? We've got full objects, decimated, convex hole, bounding box and null. So what I might do is make a level for all of these. Decimated. Let's choose that. Doesn't seem to be doing a lot. And it's because we need to turn the decimated strength up. So if I do that, you can see that some polys are starting to get eaten away. Now, when I'm closer, it's displayed like this. And when I move back, uh, we've got a decimated version of our object. So let's create another level here. And uh, for this one, I'm going to choose a convex hull. And that basically just 
makes a hull approximating the shape of our object and it puts that over the top. So let's move back even further and create another level right here. And for this one, we're going to choose bounding box. So it just displays it as a box. And the last one on our list, um, which I will choose here. Uh, in fact, I'll move it right up as well. Maybe about there. We scroll down. We can choose null. So it's just a null object. So let's get back in. We've got our model. Then we've got a decimated version of it. And then we've got a convex hull, then a bounding box, and then just a null object, just this little point in space. So you can even do level of detail um, changes to keep your viewport nice and zippy without even having to uh, make LOD models. You can just uh, do a very simple uh, version of it, hence the name Simplify. Anyway, so uh, that's about it for this tutorial, guys. As always, check out the Digital Meet website at digitalmeet.uk. You can also follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Google+. I'll put the links for those in the description. And if you'd like to support Digital Meet and help us keep going, um, our Patreon page uh, will be displayed on the video at the end. Right, cheers, guys. Bye. <laughs>